Daniel here again with offgridpermaculture.com and today I'd like to talk a little bit more in depth about the building of my nickel iron um, battery prototype. So in the previous videos I did on this topic I went over why this is so exciting for off-grid um, off energy systems, why it could be a cheap and relatively uh, affordable do-it-yourself system. Not only affordable but environmentally friendly and could even be the best battery for off-grid. Um, unfortunately, it's not manufactured in large quantities, so it can be difficult to get now, but it's something that's potentially approachable for us to make. And so I'm on the hunt for the materials, and luckily they're actually relatively easy. You know, potassium hydroxide is the main electrolyte, distilled water, that's all easy to get. Um, pretty much every hardware store will have it, and iron, pretty much every hardware store is going to have various types of sheet iron that we can use. Um, so what about the little bit more exotic stuff? Let's see here. Well, let me find my listing. Um, so here's a little bit more in-depth listing of what we actually need. Um, and in particular, we need some iron oxide compounds. We need nickel, either um, nickel oxide hydroxide or something similar, something in the chain. And I'll go into that a little bit in depth here in a minute. Um, and then we also need some pure flake nickel. We're also going to want to um, plate the inside of the, the structure. So the structure of the, the actual battery itself was generally made out of metal, or specifically steel or iron, because it's cheap um, and easy to work. And so that needs to be protected from the potassium hydroxide used for the electrolyte. And so that was done just by nickel plating. And the nickel plating is something you can do in the home shop easily. All you need is some uh, white vinegar and a piece of pure nickel and a, either a power supply or some um, extra wall charger. And just, it's super easy to do and it's something that I'm going to post a video on me doing here and uh, relatively quickly. I'm not sure exactly when that will be done. So what about the um, oxides? Well, the first thing is iron oxide and luckily for us that is used in ceramics. So if you have a ceramic shop local, super easy to to procure. If not, you know, $2, almost $3 for a quarter pound, which is ton, you know, plenty for an experimental bit. And I'll have to see exactly how much is used per battery so that we can scale this up. But, you know, even if you're buying 20 pounds of this, relative to the cost of a typical battery bank, that's practically nothing, right? The little bit more difficult side is the nickel hydroxide or nickel oxyhydroxide. And there's two ways to go about this. Um, one way is to buy this nickel, uh, nickel oxide itself. Um, unfortunately, I've heard that this may not be pure enough to work. In, you know, it may disrupt the, the, the work of the battery because of impurities that's in it. Um, so another way is we could potentially use uh, or chemically generate um, the nickel oxides that we need from other sources. One easy way is to buy nickel carbonate. And in water, that should convert to the correct nickel oxides. The other thing we do is buy um, nickel, or we can produce nickel oxyhydroxide instead of the oxide form. The nickel oxyhydroxide is the first side of the reaction, um, which you can see more in depth on my previous video on this subject. But that can be made with local hardware store uh, items, you know, bleach, um, drain cleaner, and with a nickel, one of a couple different nickel precursors, which you can also buy at the ceramic shop. So with a little bit of chemistry, we, we've got this covered. Um, so what about the nickel? Well, the nickel, you can get on eBay pretty cheap. Uh, a lot of welding supplier supply places may have relatively pure nickel as well. We'll need this for the plating and we'll need this for the anode construction. Now the one possibly difficult thing to get or expensive is the lithium hydroxide. And this is used in extremely small quantities in the electrolyte itself. It's supposed to improve efficiency. Um, this is a relatively modern addition, so it should operate without it. We can just use the potassium hydroxide, which is cheap and abundant. Um, but for now, if, if we, to experiment with the lithium hydroxide, you can get it on eBay, but it's expensive as you can see, 170 bucks. And this should be way more than we need for even a normal size system. It, 
from my understanding of how much it takes. So I'm gonna be looking into more inexpensive ways to get this and experimenting a bit and see if maybe we can just do away with it all together. Um, but that's what I got for today. So thanks for following along. And if you're at all interested in this project, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, subscriptions are always free, of course. And uh, thanks for watching.